guys, happy April. Today's video is my March highlight reel. Sounds like some sort of basketball tournament. I promise it's not. These are merely skincare, beauty, lifestyle products that I discovered throughout the month of March, love and adore and want to share with you, um, as well as a product that was a huge disappointment. So maybe hearing about it from me will save you from wasting your money on it. Now, in these videos, I also like to weave in some lifestyle things, media that I'm consuming towards the end. So make sure you watch to the end so you get some of that fun stuff too. If you have Kroger in your area, you really need to get in there. You really need to get into your Kroger if you have one in your area and try out the Shimmer Sunscreen Hydrating Cream SPF 40. Bills itself as a dupe for the Super Goop Glow Screen. In my opinion, this is much better, okay? I tried the Super Goop Glow Screen a few years ago and I liked it, it was fine, but I found that it made me look very glittery and very shiny. This does not. It's a chemical sunscreen, it's tinted, there's no cast with it, and it doesn't give that glittery, shiny, sparkly look to the skin whatsoever. Now the tint on this is uh, not overly orange or anything of that sort. The tint in this is not going to camouflage anything either. I will warn you that. Like if you're turning to this as an alternative to foundation, you want to cover up something, you're not going to get that level of coverage from this. But the formula I love, it's super hydrating, it's very moisturizing. And for me, I do not find that it burns or stings or runs into my eyes. Now, since I reviewed it, I have gotten feedback from you guys, which I love. Um, because no sunscreen is an island, right? Like everybody's going to have different experiences. And by and large, the comments that I am seeing are overwhelmingly positive, but I have gotten a few critiques. Some of you do experience a bit of the burning eyes, which again, didn't happen for me. And some of you find that it looks too greasy on your skin. Uh, but for me, I just love the way it looks on me. I love it. I adore it. I love the fact that it's like 11 to 10, 10 to $11. And I guarantee later on, Kroger will probably put this on sale too. It's so good. I mean, this has got to be one of the best tinted chemical sunscreens I've ever encountered. The iron on oxides in this, which are part of the tint, they can offer some protection against visible light, which for people who have deeper skin tones, that visible light can contribute to early onset and more stubborn hyperpigmentation. And this has a lot of antioxidants in it. It has niacinamide, which I know a lot of you guys don't necessarily get along well with, but niacinamide as a whole is a really good ingredient. It has a lot of benefits for your skin. It's great for dry skin, oily skin, acne prone skin. It also has anti-aging benefits. And and it uh, is beneficial for the moisture barrier. It's helpful for redness. It really, you know, if you can tolerate it, it's just a great ingredient to incorporate into your routine. Ferulic acid and antioxidant. Uh, this does not pill for me whatsoever. Now, this is not water resistant. So if you're going to be participating in outdoor sports, sweating, swimming, and the like, I suggest instead using a water resistant sunscreen. And if you watched, I think my last month's favorites video, a water resistant tinted sunscreen that you should try out is the Neutrogena Pure Screen Plus. Love that comes in four different shades. I just repurchased it on the Amazonian. Love it. So check out my review of that product if you are looking for a water resisted tinted product from the drugstore slash Amazon slash your grocery store. Um, it is very good. Um, but yeah, this, this has not disappointed. I love that it's three ounces too, so you can travel with it. It's moisturizing, and in my opinion, it's moisturizing enough that if you're really trying to pare down your skincare routine, which I always encourage people to do in terms of the number of products, you know, you can get away with waking up and, and just putting this on your face. Some, some people will be able to do that. You know, some people like to wash their face first thing in the morning, fine, but not everybody needs to. I go through periods of time where I don't wash my face in the morning. Um, and so imagine a world in which you just wake up and put this on your skin and that's your skincare routine. I mean, hello, uh, for just every day being in the office, running errands here and there. Yeah, great product. And it's super affordable. If you hate it, if you hate the way it looks on your face, you can at least use it as a forearm hand moisturizer. You're getting the sunscreen on there and you know, you, you haven't been, you haven't been robbed like you might feel if you spent $30 for a sunscreen of this size. Moving on to a fail from this month for me, La Roche-Posay's Niacinamide 10 Serum. Now I really approach this with an open mind. 
And if you're new here, I've had several gripes with products like this in the past in terms of 10% niacinamide, is that really necessary? Most of the research showing benefit with niacinamide uses anywhere from two to 5%. So like, do we really need more? In many cases in skincare with ingredients, higher is not necessarily better. And in many cases, higher percentages can be just more irritating. But I was willing to give it a try because a lot of people don't have any issue with these higher percentages of niacinamide, yada, yada, yada. And it is such a good ingredient. But the other thing about this that made me more open-minded to try trying it out is the fact that it has uh, resorcinol, another antioxidant which can be beneficial for hyperpigmentation. So you have a serum here that's got some good ingredients for sunspots, age spots, hyperpigmentation, and for oily acne prone skin, clarifying through the niacinamide. But man, the fragrance on this serum is so headache inducing, I could not tolerate it whatsoever. Personally, y'all know I don't like fragrance in skincare products because first of all, it's a fairly it's a it's a common allergen and it can be irritating. And I just don't like having heavy scent that close on my face. And I think for for a lot of people it can trigger headaches, and that's definitely the case with this. And I think the reason it's so strong is that there is low molecular weight alcohol in this formula, which I've said in videos before, it's fine. You know, a lot of people are afraid of it. It can be a bit drying, but it can help with an enhancing penetration of the beneficial ingredients, the active ingredients in this, the niacinamide, the, the um, resorcinol. I believe that the low molecular weight alcohol in this product is what is contributing to the fragrance power, the strength and its durability on the skin, which are, are not good aspects in my opinion. I think people who enjoy fragrance in their skincare, they often verbalize that it motivates them to stay consistent with it and that you know they just enjoy it. It's a pleasant experience. I have a hard time believing the scent in this is going to bring you joy. It's not a pleasant scent. It's, it's a very cheap perfume smell. And to have that lingering around, I, I have a hard time believing that you're gonna enjoy it. Now that being said, when I reviewed this, I got a lot of comments from people saying, I've been using this for a long time now and the fragrance fades for me and it doesn't bother me. What are you talking about? I have a question for those of you who said that. What country are you in? Because I suspect that the American version may be the fragrance is different in comparison to say, for example, a European version of this, uh, just based on the feedback that I'm getting from you all. So I'm wondering if it's diff slightly different in other countries and specifically with regards to the fragrance. If you use too much volume of product, and I'm talking about the US formulas here, because again, I don't know how how they differ. You know, they may be s different in, in, the, uh, in other countries, but the American, La Roche-Posay serums, if you use too much volume, you will likely get pilling when you put stuff on over it. So for example, you use this in the morning, if you put on too much and then you put on sunscreen over it, you're likely gonna get pilling. And I think it has to do with the, the formula overall. Perhaps the low molecular weight alcohol makes it so that when you layer something like a sunscreen on over, you get that pilling. And in the case of sunscreen, when you see pilling, you're not getting optimal sun protection. It's compromised there. So always try and avoid that. And one way to avoid it is to make sure you're not using too much volume. Just a very thin film is all you need. But yeah, all that to say, like this is so headache inducing. But back to the winner's circle. <laughs> Gold Bond Retinol Overnight Body and Face Lotion. OMG. Oh my gosh. I've been using this for several months now, actually. When did I review it for you? About a month ago, actually. I've already finished the tube of it that I purchased, and I also purchased it in a pump bottle. This is really good. I am definitely seeing results using this. Now, it's got some other ingredients in it that I think also contribute to the benefit that I'm seeing with this product. It has urea in it, or specifically hydroxyethyl urea, which is a form of urea. And urea is a hygroscopic. It helps soften and smooth the skin surface. This has shea butter. It also has a peptide in it that may help with uh, moisture retention. It also has this extract from the resurrection plant. The resurrection plant is this plant where it's like this little desiccated ball. It can really stand up to dry conditions, but the slightest bit of moisture and it's like, boom, here I am world. 
yeah, the resurrection plant is really cool. So as you can imagine, that plant probably has a wide array of compounds that are really good for like clinging on to water. So it has extracts from that. Um, which you know may contribute to the hydrating benefits. All I have to say, I've been using this for several months now, and I'm really seeing noticeable changes to the skin of my body. Less bumpiness on my arms, less uh, texture. I feel a difference in my skin. It feels smoother, and I love this because it doesn't it doesn't make the skin feel sticky or filmy. There's no residue. Now I've only been using this like from the collarbone down. I don't use this to my face. To my face, I use tretinoin. I I haven't been using this on my face because I don't like using tretinoin along with other forms of topical vitamin A because that's unnecessary and just creates for you know a, a greater risk of irritation. So I, I just use this to my body. I've already gone through a whole tube of it and I'm almost halfway through with this. Uh, a pleasure to apply, spreads on the skin very easily. Overall, man, this is good. You know, Gold Bond, Gold Bond has some good stuff these days. Spring is here and some will be here before you know it. So body rejuvenation is on everyone's mind, oftentimes this time of year, because you're gonna be transitioning into, you know, shorts and the like, you know, maybe wearing a bathing suit and you just want your skin to be soft, smooth and glowy, uh, or, you know, going out in the evening, maybe wearing a dress, uh, shows your legs and your arms and things. This, inexpensive and effective. What I love most, <laughs> it works well. It really works well to rejuvenate the appearance of the skin on the body and keep it hydrated, keep that hydration sustained. This is one of the most impressive body retinols I have ever tried. And I have tried a lot of very good ones and reviewed them on here. Polish Choice makes a great one. I love that. Um, What's that brand? Advanced Clinicals makes a good inexpensive body retinol. This is superior. Yeah, and I'm not being hyperbolic. This is superior. I bought this at Walmart myself. All right, so those are skincare products, but I have to share with you guys something that is very much related to skincare, but is not like goop in a tube. And that is my Vionic slippers. Now, if you've been here a while, you know I love these slippers. And I recently purchased a new pair for myself in this jazzy coral color uh, because I just wanted to change it up. I These slippers last forever. They're very good. They're very durable. But the reason it relates to skincare so much is that these slippers offer such amazing arch support, heel support. They have built-in orthotic support, which is so important for your feet and reducing callus formation. I cannot say enough good things. For me personally, the way I keep my feet smooth, hydrated, and healthy, the skin on my feet, is a combination of using that carousel foot ointment or the Dermatonics uh, Urea Foot Cream. I use those a couple of nights a week on my feet to soften and hydrate the skin there and prevent callus. And then when I'm indoors, I always wear little socks and these. I don't walk around barefoot ever. And the reason I don't is because that generates a lot of friction on the skin of your feet, dries them out, and contributes to callus, cracked heels, and then those cracked heels, the fissures, they're an entry point for foot fungus and the like. So for me, that, that mambo combo of the urea foot ointments a couple of nights a week, always wearing socks and these in the house, huge. And never go barefoot in the house. So Vionic makes a variety of different styles of slippers. And I have another pair that's a slightly different style that I also love. But I like this Gemma style. It's like a little mule. And I was initially kind of on the fence about the mule because mule shoes often can be a bit of a hazard. They slide off, but these you can actually adjust. There's a little Velcro here. You can actually adjust the tightness around the foot so they stay on. They don't slide off. They're so comfortable, really nice and supportive. I mean, it's like walking around in shoes. I wanted to draw your attention to them because I think that they make nice gifts. You know, Easter is going to be here, what, this weekend coming up soon, and then you also have Mother's Day. These make great gifts. Graduation, great gift. Moving on to media, I didn't read anything this past month. I did like no reading whatsoever. Very shameful. Well, I did read, you know, you know, my journal articles and things of that sort, but that's not like share worthy. I watched Mystic Pizza for fun. I love that movie. Lighthearted, fun, pleasant watch. But I'm telling you, I'm not someone who really gets into celebrities. Like I don't go crazy over 
over any celebrity. But I have to say, if I ever met Julia Roberts in person, I would probably faint. Simply because I have, I love so many of her movies and I've watched so many of her movies like on repeat. See back in the day before there was YouTube, before there were all of these streaming services when we just had like VHS and DVD, I would, I've always liked to just have movies or now, nowadays it's like YouTube just in the background when I'm doing work around the apartment. I like to have that in the background and I would just pop in some of her movies and just play them on repeat like Steel Magnolias I love um, what's that one closer man that movie what's that movie come out like 2004 I loved that movie it's a very likable celebrity in my opinion uh, but I don't put the, any celebrity on a pedestal so for all we know you know she could have some deviant behavior going on behind the scenes but as a whole I really do like her movies a lot her acting I've always enjoyed yeah Mystic pizza was really was really cute and who was in it that was like a cameo Matt Damon was in it I was like is that Matt Damon and it was and then last but not least my trip to New Orleans for the AAD I like to go to the AAD every year get my continuing medical education credits in and you know network with old friends and make new friends and I had the opportunity this year to attend a dinner hosted by Neutrogena and I got to meet Kerry Washington that was a lot of fun the dress that I wore I loved very comfortable easy to pack, didn't wrinkle, uh, low maintenance dress. You know, I always enjoy visiting New Orleans and I finally got to try PJ's coffee. Y'all have been recommending it and I've seen people recommend it in other videos and it was really good. I think next year the meeting is supposed to be in San Diego. That'll be fun. <laughs> I always like San Diego. We went to, we meaning you guys and myself went to San Diego right around uh, the end of 2019. It was the summer of 2019, man. Time flies, but that was the last time we went to San Diego. Went to the beach a lot. I had a great time in San Diego. Didn't I go ice skating a lot there too? I think I did, yeah. San Diego is fun, so I think that's where it's gonna be next year. Anyways guys, that is the March highlight reel. It was a great month. Uh, I hope you all had a wonderful March. Share in the comments things that you have been loving or any fun experiences that you had, trips that you took. Let's all live vicariously through one another. But if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.